Ukraine is marking one year since the start of the Russian invasion. Tens of thousands of people have been killed, roughly 13 million more displaced, including 8 million refugees across Europe now. And if that wasn't enough, State Secretary of State Antony Blinken is sounding the alarm about growing ties between China and Russia, which could include lethal military assistance from the Chinese. Today, the UN adopted a non-binding resolution calling for Russia to end hostilities in Ukraine and withdraw all troops, but that will have little impact. ABC News' Patrick Riebel joining us now live from Kyiv. Also, ABC News National Security and Defense Analyst and former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for the Middle East, Mick Mulroy. So, Patrick, let's start with you. Vladimir Putin, this week again, accusing the West of starting the war. Uh, an obvious lie. How long can he keep telling this story to the Russian people before he just starts facing more opposition from within his own country? Well, you know, Kira, I think quite a long time, potentially, because ultimately the lies that he is spreading, that Russia is surrounded by enemies, that NATO is to blame for the war, that Ukraine isn't a real country, these are all falling on quite fertile ground because in Russia, many people there, these ideas resonate with them because of this ultimately quite imperial attitude that they have towards Ukraine, combined with many years of propaganda, both in the Soviet Union and now in the present day, um, about the conflict that Vladimir Putin has been both painting and stoking with NATO for a long time. But I think really the big question is when will that lie be found out? It will be when Ukraine is able to inflict enough pain on Russia's military that it becomes impossible for Russia Russia to hide, and we are already seeing that to a certain degree. I mean, Vladimir Putin has had to scale back his his goals for this um, this special military operation, as he calls it, because of the of the embarrassments that his military have have felt on the battlefield. And when you're losing the sheer number of people that Russia is losing, it becomes more and more difficult to hide that. So, Mick, Russia and China, we are now learning, maybe forging even stronger ties clearly a huge concern for the West. And on Good Morning America today, Secretary Blinken talked about it. Let's take a listen. We thought it was really important to uh, make clear that China's looking at this. And what they're hearing, not just from us, but from many other countries around the world, is don't do it. But don't what would it mean the if the arms went through? Well, it could make a material difference in Russia's uh, capacity on the ground at a time when we want to bring this war to an end, not add fuel to the fire and have it continue. How much of a difference could it really make from what you know, Mick? So, Kira, I think it will have a substantial difference on the battlefield. China has the capacity to keep weapons and munitions flowing steadily uh, into the Russian hands in Ukraine, and that is something the Russians have had a very difficult time doing. We need to do everything we can to ensure that doesn't happen, to include releasing intel so our allies can see uh, what their intent is, uh, and also looking at sanctions so that we can make this uh, painful for the Chinese if they elect to essentially join the war with Russia in Ukraine. How would that make impact, though, the relationship between the U.S. and China? Isn't, isn't China more concerned about its relationship with the U.S. than supporting Russia? I would hope so, and I think they are. And I think that's what's going to hold uh, the day when it comes to them joining uh, Russia, essentially, by providing the logistical support that they've been requesting from China the entire time. So I think we need to make it clear to China that if they do that, then they own the war and everything that goes with it. All the war crimes that have happened and will happen, especially will happen when it comes to using their weapons and equipment. And that is something that we really need to, to put out there so China realizes just what they're deciding to do or not do. And Patrick, as you know, uh, Ukrainian President Zelensky addressed uh, the one year and saying before all his people, glory to Ukraine. Let's look at that moment. A year of unity, the year of invincibility, the furious year of invincibility. Its main result is that we endured we were not defeated, and we will do everything to gain victory this year. Glory to Ukraine. Patrick, from what you know, how much do these messages really inspire his troops, his fellow Ukrainians, everybody within the country, as they clearly are remaining quite resilient? A great deal, I think. You know, I think Ukrainians, when we speak to them, speak with enormous pride about Volodymyr Zelensky and the role that he has played, 
both in inspiring them and also in his just tireless efforts to bring attention onto Ukraine and to win the support that they need. And he's been extraordinarily successful at it. I mean, we just watched him give a lengthy press conference here in Kyiv to a very large group of international journalists um, where he answered many questions on, on different issues. He was asked, though, what was the moment that most that he found most difficult, the most difficult day during this war? And he said it was Bucha, which was the, the, the site, the town north of Kyiv, where this terrible massacre took place by Russian soldiers and where hundreds of bodies were found in a mass grave and that Volodymyr Zelensky visited uh, within a day of it being uh, liberated from Russian forces back in April. And, you know, that again just speaks to how he's been this type of wartime leader, this wartime leader who has inspired both his own people but also people around the world. So, Mick, one more question, if you don't mind. You know, we've seen a year of sanctions on Russia, right? But are they really having a meaningful impact on the battlefield, do you think? So, Kira, they're not having the effect that we would have liked, but they are having an effect. Uh, right now, the Russian economy is expected to shrink by three and a half percentage points next year. Prior to the sanctions, it was expected to grow. Uh, so that is an effect. And we've also frozen over $650 billion, and hopefully that'll be used to help rebuild uh, Ukraine in the end. But no, it hasn't had the effect when it comes to actually affecting their uh, strategy on the ground in Ukraine. But their strategy isn't working. So that's more of a military problem than a sanctions issue. But it should not uh, stop us from finding more sanctions and making it more difficult for the Russian economy to keep their war machine going. Patrick, Mick, thanks guys so much. And ABC News Live will be airing a special Standing Strong, One Year of War in Ukraine. That is tonight, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, streaming right here on ABC News Live and Hulu. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.